Today I'm going to walk you through how to make the chaste heart of St. Joseph step by step. We're going to draw it out first and then you can use watercolors or something else to color it in. Let's get started. The materials that you need for this painting are a piece of watercolor paper. I taped mine down with some masking tape. Painter's tape works as well. I have a cup full of water. I have some paint brushes. I'm using watercolors, paper towels, a pencil, some salt, and if you want to, you can use something like masking fluid to help protect parts of the painting that you don't want to get paint on them at first, like the lilies. I'll link this in the description box um, in case that's something you're interested in playing with and trying out. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw out our heart with our pencil. So whenever I draw out hearts, I personally like to start with the bumps at the top. So I draw two curved lines to create the top bumps of my heart. And when I finish, it kind of reminds me of the shape of a bird. The bottom of the heart comes into a point kind of like the letter V. So I'm just going to extend the curves at the top down into a V point at the bottom of my heart. And if I'm ever going too fast, you can always pause the video to catch up or jump ahead if I am moving slow and you're ready for the next step. So once I get my heart drawn out, I can start to draw in my flames. So I'm going to start over here on the left side. I like to do curved lines. This one kind of reminds me of like the curve of a question mark. And that creates a nice um, curve for my flame. I want the ends of my flames to be pointed, but I want them to be more rounded. So it's kind of like a similar curved line, just a little bit wider. And I can do the same thing on the opposite side. I can draw a curved line. This one kind of reminds me of the letter S. And I want the end to be pointed, but um, I'm trying to match the curve, just making it a little bit wider in some spots for my flames. Um, the flame in the middle, I can do a wavy line, kind of like this. And it's up to you how wild you want your flames to be, but we just want them to have some parts where they're thinner, some parts where they're a little bit thicker. The next thing that we're going to be working on is we are going to draw out the lilies for our Chase Heart of Joseph. So I want to start with this big lily that's open and that's kind of in the middle. So each of these petals, they're pointed at the top and they are wider at the base. So um, think kind of like the top of a triangle, but instead of having flat sides, it's going to be more rounded and curved. So for this lily, I want to have five petals. So it's like I'm drawing for like this side, I'm doing like a frown line connected to a smile line or two parentheses that are kind of stuck together. And that creates some nice curves for my lily. And if you want, you could even draw in some little details like that for the center. Um, I have another lily that I want, um, but this um, from the side. So I want to start off with a shape that's kind of like a letter V, except instead of being straight, I want the edges to curve out into the side. So these will be these two petals. So um, those will stay pointy at the ends. And then I want to do one more petal kind of in the middle like this. And I'm going to add some lines for like petal creases like that. Once I get my um, lilies drawn out, I can add in some extra leaves. So the leaves are similar to the petals. They are longer though, but they kind of are white at the base, pointed at the top. You can put in as many or as few as you'd like on yours. And depending on how big your lilies are, you may or may not have a lot of room or you may have tons of room. 
I'm going to extend the stem line over here, kind of running off the edge of the heart. And since I have space, I'm going to add some more leaves down here as well. So anything that I don't want, I can always erase with my eraser, kind of like so. So whenever you finish getting your pencil heart drawn out, you have the option of using something like masking fluid to block out um, the lilies and the leaves. And what that does is it's going to protect the paper when you work on painting in your heart. Um, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of rubber cement, um, the way it looks when it dries, but it's a nice way to protect your paper. You don't have to use masking tape. You would just have to be really careful painting around each of those little parts of your lilies. So I'm going to do masking fluid on mine because I have some kind of hard to reach spots with my paintbrush. So what you do is you use a brush, um, or stick or something that has um, this one has a rubber tip and I can dip it into my masking fluid and I can kind of paint with it on top of anything that I want to protect in my artwork like I said you don't have to use masking fluid to paint this lily I just think that it can be um, a way to protect your artwork, especially if you have some spots where it's like hard to reach with a paintbrush. So um, I'm going to speed up this. So if you're impatient um, for waiting for that masking fluid to dry, you can always use something like a blow dryer to help um, make that go a little bit faster. I'm going to show you up close what that masking fluid looks like when it is all drying. It kind of has um, like a rubber cement look and um, it's just a little bit different in color. So it should be dry to the touch. It's a little bit tacky, um, but that's what it should look like when you are all done and it is dry and ready to paint on top of. So everything below that um, on my paper is protected from the masking fluid. So what we're going to work on next is we are going to be filling in our heart. So I'm just going to wet my watercolor paints with a spray bottle. That way they're wet and ready to go. And I'm going to start off filling in the heart. So with watercolors, it's good to paint um, a section at a time. That way the colors don't um, bleed into each other. So I'm just taking a nice red shade and I'm going to be filling in my heart. And because I painted the masking fluid on top of my drawing, I can paint on top of the masking fluid and I don't have to worry about those lilies getting painted on. If you did not use masking fluid, you would just want to make sure that you are painting very carefully around the shape of your flowers, leaves, and stems. Um, if you accidentally paint on top of it, you can use something like a paper towel to wipe away any mistakes, any paint that gets somewhere that you don't want it to go. So if I want any of that paint to be darker, I can add another layer of paint. Um, you can do as many or as few colors as you want to to get different shades in your heart. 
but um, once you are done filling in your heart, we are going to start to work on the flames. That way it gives our heart some time to dry before we continue on to the next steps. So I'm going to switch to a smaller paintbrush for my flames. So I want to do a lot of different colors in my flames. And I find that if I do the lighter colors first, um, that looks really nice. So I'm going to um, get my paintbrush wet and I'm going to start with a yellow. So I'm going to be working on filling in the flames with my yellow. The lighter I want the color to be, the more water I can use on my brush and the less paint I put on it. So if I do just a little bit of paint and a lot of water, I can get some nice light yellows, kind of like this. And if I want my paint darker, I just grab more paint on my paintbrush and that creates a darker, more saturated shade. And I'm gonna be filling in all these little parts of my flames with different shades of yellow to start off with. So once my flames are filled in with my paint, I have the option of adding in extra colors. So I wanna add in some orange, so I'm just gonna grab some orange on my paintbrush, and when I kind of drop the color right on top of the yellow, because the yellow paint is still wet, it's spreading this orange paint that I'm adding throughout and it's um, the paints kind of like drifting into different parts of the yellow. So I can add as much or as little of this color as I'd like. Um, I'm going to grab some of the red that I used for my heart because I think that might be cool. So I'm going to dip that onto my wet orange and yellow flames and I'm just kind of dabbing at it with my paintbrush and um, I can kind of like pull it into different directions to kind of encourage that paint to spread and move around. And then um, if you want to add in other colors, like purple is a color that I love to add in to flames, um, feel free to add those in. Um, once your paint is all put in for your flames, a technique that I like to use is um, salt. Salt creates these really neat crystal effects um, that I feel like in this um, case helps make your fire look more flame-like. So I just um, sprinkle on a little bit of salt and what's going to happen is that salt is going to suck up some of the pigment as it's drying and it's going to make some really neat crystal-like effects. So before we um, start to work on the lilies, we have to make sure that everything in our painting dries. If you're feeling impatient, you can always pull out something like a blow dryer and blow dry parts of your painting to help encourage everything to dry faster. Once my um, paint has dried up enough that I can start to take off this masking fluid, I'm going to just kind of rub my finger against the masking fluid to start to get it to peel up. and. It totally reminds me of rubber cement. It's just really satisfying to pull up this sticky <laughs> masking fluid. And you can see that as I'm pulling it up, it is it has protected the lilies and the leaves from the colors of my heart. So what I'm going to be working on next is I'm going to start to fill in my lilies and my leaves. So I am going to start off with a green and I'm going to be filling in the shape of my leaves being careful not to get any of the paint on the lily petals. Though if that were to happen I could just take a paper towel and wipe that up. I'll start with a little bit of green there, and I'll put some green over here as well on this leaf. And one thing that I like to do with leaves is I like to take my brush, grab a little bit of yellow or another color, and I can kind of dab that yellow against the green of the leaves, and that just kind of changes the color up a little bit. So if I wanted it brighter, I could add more 
yellow and if I wanted it darker I could do the same thing kind of dot on a little bit more green and that just kind of changes up the color. I'm going to do the same thing to other parts of my painting. I'm going to get this leaf filled in with green. I'm careful not to paint on top of this lily flower petal because I want that to stay white. So while that green is still wet, I want to drop in some of that yellow. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of yellow and I'm just kind of dabbing that directly on top of the green of my leaves. And that just changes the color up, makes it a little bit more interesting than if it was just straight green. Right? So lilies, um, they have a little bit of green and yellow on the insides and um, as well as kind of like at the base of the flowers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some yellow and I'm going to kind of dab the yellow onto the center of this lily and I also want to dab it on the base of this one that's turned sideways. And um, I had some green paint from my leaf down there that's already starting to grab that yellow and blend with it. I like that, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, with this one that's more open while it's still wet, I can just tap on a little bit of this green paint um, just to kind of change it so it's not perfectly white in the center. We want it a little bit different. And anything that you don't like or you want to soften up the color, you can grab like a paper towel. And so I can kind of um, dab at the edges here to kind of soften up that color. So um, one final thing that I like to do to kind of um, finish up the flames of my painting is I like to grab a little bit of gold and splatter it onto parts of my painting. I feel like it helps it look like the um, flames are kind of sparking. So I just put a little bit of wet gold paint on my brush. Um, the more wet it is, I feel like the better this works. And if you just tap the back of your paintbrush, that kind of splatters the gold onto your picture. And that makes it look like the sparks um, are kind of coming off of the flames. You can also add in any details um, with gold, like I have like these centers. Um, I can add a little bit of gold there just to make it a little bit different and interesting. So once your painting is all dry, you can start to remove that masking tape. You just wanna make sure that as you're peeling it off, you're kind of angling the tape so it is pulling out and away from your artwork. So let's take a closer look at that. So we have different effects um, that happen when the watercolor paints are dry. We have the crystallization and the flames and we have the sparkly gold that's added on top that makes it look like the sparks um, coming off of that fire. Thank you so much for following along with me. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you can check out some of the other ones that I have here on my channel. You can also subscribe so you can stay up to date on upcoming art tutorials, as well as learning about creativity, but with a Catholic twist. I would love to see what you created in our tutorial today. Feel free to tag me on social media. Remember that you are loved. God loves you unconditionally, and he loves your artwork unconditionally.